your worst nightmare. You can't grow muscle anymore. You've reached the natural limit. The truth is, noob gains in the gym, building muscle really fast, it doesn't last forever. Why not? That's simply not possible. And I don't find this funny anymore. It never was supposed to be. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Why can't you keep building muscle forever naturally? Welcome back, Dr. Mile Wolf here with Wolf Coaching, breaking down the science around the natural limit for building muscle. Before we go into why the natural limit even exists, let me deliver the good news. The good news is that you can definitely make gains almost no matter your level of training experience. Even advanced trainees can likely still gain some muscle. It just takes a lot more time the more advanced you become. What's realistic progress to achieve when it comes to muscle hypertrophy and strength gains? Well, a meta-analysis of 200 studies or so by Warren Baum and colleagues in 2007 found that on average, across these 200 studies, participants' muscle cross-sectional area increased at a rate of 0.1 to 0.2% on average per day spent training. There's a few caveats to that number. First, most of these studies included untrained participants. So if you're untrained, you can use these numbers as a rough guideline or maybe even adjust upwards slightly. However, if you've been training for a while, it is likely unrealistic to expect quite this much growth. Additionally, depending on how you see it, you could view these numbers as a slight overestimate or underestimate. It's an overestimate in that people generally train harder when they're being observed and are training in the context of a lab, but it's a slight underestimate when you consider that oftentimes in these studies that are doing a single exercise for a single muscle group two or three times a week. In all likelihood, you're training more effectively than that. And finally, this is an average. You, dear viewer, might be below average, or you might be above average. In all likelihood, by the nature of averages, you're going to be somewhere around average. But just consider that these numbers don't necessarily apply to you perfectly. But to give you an example of what this 0.1 to 0.2% growth per day really means, let's say you have 12 inch arms and you want to add two inches to your arms, how long would that take you based on these numbers? Well, depending on the assumptions we make about how much of your arm circumference is made up of bone and fat tissue, let's say somewhere between 50 to 75% of your circumference is muscle tissue, that would mean that adding two inches to your arms would take somewhere between around 100 to 300 days or about four to 12 months. And to be fair, this is roughly what I expect most beginners to be able to gain. In about a year-ish, most beginners, if they're gaining a bit of weight and training effectively in their first year of training, oftentimes are able to add around two inches of arm size. Importantly, this also applies to women. While people often think that women can't gain as much muscle, what have you, in relative terms, they can gain just as much muscle as men. It's just that women have a lower starting point in terms of overall muscle mass. But in terms of percentage increase from baseline, women gain just as much muscle as men. That was the finding of a recent meta-analysis by Rafalo and colleagues on differences between the two sexes in how much muscle is gained. In absolute effects, meaning how many kilograms of muscle were being gained, or how much of an increase in muscle thickness there was in terms of centimeters, yes, men gain more. But that is an artifact of their bigger muscles to begin with. But in terms of percentage increase, it turns out women and men do gain the same amount of muscle mass. So that's a rough guideline based on the research of how much progress you can expect to make as a beginner. What about strength? How fast can you realistically expect to gain strength? Well, a big survey by Stronger by Science from a few years ago asked around 1,800 participants how strong they were and also asked them how advanced they were so that we can get a rough idea of how much strength people gain in the big three, the squat, the bench, deadlift, based on how long they've been training for. And basically, for relatively untrained men, it's not uncommon to gain around 5 to 10 kilograms on the squat, bench, or deadlift in the first few months of lifting, or the first year or so of lifting. For women, around 3 to 5 kilograms per lift per month is pretty reasonable on the squat, bench, deadlift. However, as people become more advanced, that can slow down quite substantially. And by the time you've been lifting for, say, a year or two for both men and women, you're lucky if you're putting on one to two kilograms on any given lift per month on average. So if you've been lifting for two years or so, you might be gaining an additional 10 kilograms or so on a lift per year if you're lucky. Taking your squat from, say, 405 pounds or 180 kilograms or so to 190 over the course of a year if you've been lifting for a few years now. Keep in mind, with these numbers, there is going to be some degree of survivorship bias in all likelihood. For one, if you don't see good results when lifting, you're more likely to quit lifting altogether. 
And so the people who quit lifting because they weren't making gains didn't end up putting their numbers into this survey. And secondly, in general, if you're really feeling bad about your lifts, you might not be as likely to actually take this survey in the first place, even if you are lifting consistently. Importantly, this same pattern of rapid strength improvements and then a pretty drastic slowdown in progress is evident in another couple of studies, both in powerlifters and in the general population. In a study by Latella and colleagues that I was involved with, we looked at the improvement in powerlifting total from meet one to future meets over time, using a huge database of powerlifters. Keep in mind that most people enter their first powerlifting meet when they have at least a year or two of lifting experience under their belt. So we're not talking about rank beginners here, more so about like intermediates to advanced. On average, from their first competition to about a year after the first competition, most powerlifters gain about 10% on their total. So if you just competed for the first time and your total right now is around 500 kilograms, after a year of powerlifting on top of that, you might expect on average around a 550 kilogram total. The bad news comes after that. To go from adding roughly 10% to your total to roughly adding 20% to your total takes nine further years. So you go from adding 10% over the first year of powerlifting to adding only an additional 10% over the subsequent nine years of powerlifting. Those are averages. Your experience might differ. Importantly though, this sort of logarithmic growth increase is apparent in other research as well. For example, I was involved in another study where we looked at data sets of people performing 20 minutes of lifting a week. So really minimum dose sort of lifting. A gym chain in the Netherlands called Fit20 is centered around the idea that people can achieve strength gains by just spending 20 minutes a week lifting. Importantly, the trainers there consistently take note of how much weight people are lifting. And so we were able to analyze that data set to see how fast people progress as they keep lifting with a minimum dose approach. And when rescaling strength as a percentage of baseline, in other words, if you could leg press 100 kilograms when you first started lifting, how does your strength increase over time compared to that? Participants saw an increase in strength of 30 to 50% over the first year of lifting. However, after that, if you extend the time frame to six years of lifting, they only gain around 50 to 60% of strength total over those six years of lifting. Importantly, they were only lifting 20 minutes a week in this study. So I don't think this is gonna be representative of everyone's progress, but it's worth keeping in mind that across multiple studies, both in powerlifting populations that are really trying to get stronger, in populations that are doing more minimum dose training, gains really slow down after like a year of lifting. And the same appears to apply to muscle growth too. And that is where the infamous natty limit comes in. Why does the natural limit exist? Why do gains slow down so much once we spent a year lifting? Well, what prompted me to make this video in the first place was the publication of a recent paper entitled The Plateau in Muscle Growth with Resistance Training, an Exploration of Possible Mechanisms. Let me put this up front. This paper is dense. In fact, here's a graph showing just how complicated the muscle growth process can be and how many things can play into it and explain why gains slow down over time. I'll give you the summary, but just know, we don't know everything fully yet. And while all the mechanisms I'm about to explain maybe probably have something to do with it, some of them are more likely explanations and we need further research to fully explain all of this stuff. First, a quick primer on how muscle is thought to grow. Your body is in a constant state of flux. Things are happening all the time. And in fact, within your muscles, Muscle proteins are being broken down, which is what we call muscle protein breakdown, and built up, which is what we call muscle protein synthesis, all the time. And whether or not you grow muscle as a result of your nutrition, training, and so forth, is really just going to be a matter of those two things. Or at least, that's what we think. We can express that as net protein balance equals muscle protein synthesis minus muscle protein breakdown. If net protein balance is positive, you're growing muscle. If it's negative, you're losing muscle. And importantly, whatever you do with your diet, your training, etc., can influence this equation. If you're eating more protein, congratulations, you've boosted muscle protein synthesis and reduced muscle protein breakdown. The same applies to lifting weights. But at the physiological level, in all likelihood, muscle protein synthesis needs to exceed muscle protein breakdown if you are to grow muscle. In other words, you need to be in a positive net protein balance. So why does net protein balance tend to reduce and potentially even become negative over time in trained lifters? Why is there a natural limit? Well, as you keep lifting and you become more trained, your muscles might become a little bit more anabolically resistant. In other words, when you're sending them the signal to increase muscle protein synthesis, as you keep training and training, they become incrementally more deaf and unable to hear you when you tell them to increase muscle protein creation and finally grow some muscle. As the authors put it, it may be that anabolic signaling pathways become more refractory to loading with chronic training partially explaining muscle growth plateau over time. Importantly though, both mechanistically and in more applied settings, we do have evidence that taking some time off training might decrease anabolic resistance slightly and resensitize your muscles 
to the muscle protein synthesis response from lifting weights. For instance, a couple of studies by Ogasawara and colleagues looking at the effects of training cessation on subsequent progress suggest that taking some time off in the form of deloads or just time off lifting in general could resensitize your muscles a little bit, allowing you to make progress in the long term. But this remains pretty speculative. We only have a few studies on this, and I wouldn't bank on taking time off really boosting your muscle growth. As long as you're taking the occasional week off training every few months, there's a good chance you're getting this effect already. Next, certain factors might impact the muscle protein breakdown part of the equation. By increasing muscle protein breakdown, you're reducing the amount of muscle growth being seen. Importantly, muscle protein breakdown doesn't seem to change that much as you become more trained. The authors note that it's possible that the AMPK pathway, which is a pathway that gets activated during energy restriction or cutting, for example, becomes a bit more prominent in trained lifters. And so as a trained lifter, potentially getting into a calorie surplus and consuming sufficient protein might be the main things to pay attention to when it comes to minimizing muscle protein breakdown. And so if you want to maximize hypertrophy as a more trained lifter, we already kind of knew this anyways, but being at least a bit of a surplus is probably a good idea. And likewise for protein. Protein both stimulates muscle protein synthesis and reduces muscle protein breakdown, both of which contribute to a more positive net protein balance or more muscle growth. So there are a few things that seem to impact both muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown in more trained lifters that we need to be aware of. And these things influence the natural limit and why we stop growing muscle in the first place. But there are also other more physiological or cellular mechanisms that might be a play as to why you eventually almost stop growing muscle. The first one is myonuclear domain theory. Let me break down what myonuclei are. Like every cell, your muscle fiber cells have nuclei, or essentially little control centers. Importantly, muscle fiber cells are what we call multinucleated, meaning they can have multiple nuclei at the same time. You can view these nuclei as factories. Inside these little factories, new proteins are being synthesized. Importantly, one factory or one nucleus can only oversee production in so much territory. Eventually, you need to build more factories to build enough protein to keep expanding the muscle. And so, in the long term, addition of new factories or new myonuclei is important to continue muscle building. Adding new myonuclei is likely what keeps us growing over the long term, preventing us from hitting that natural limit. And that's why taking steroids, for example, seems beneficial in part. It allows you to build new myonuclei. And so one of the more likely potential explanations as to why people stop growing muscle or stop growing as much muscle is because they essentially hit a ceiling on how many myonuclei they have around. And if they're unable to add new myonuclei to their muscle, they might no longer be able to add any muscle altogether. As the authors put it, it has been proposed that an increase in translational capacity may be crucial to provide additional machinery to support a sustained increase in muscle growth. Increased translational efficiency is sufficient to increase muscle growth initially, but it may not be enough to allow further muscle growth without an increase in ribosome number. Another potential explanation, albeit a little bit weaker, is the Sizer theory. The Sizer theory essentially states that as a cell grows in size, its rate of growth diminishes, and this would also apply to muscle cells. And so, as your muscle cells get bigger and bigger, their rate of growth slows down, until eventually it comes to a near halt, explaining the natural limit. Myostatin, a powerful negative regulator of skeletal muscle mass, may also have something to do with it. But at this point, we don't really know how myostatin changes over time in more trained lifters. So far, we've identified a few reasons as to why training age can reduce your muscle growth over time. A greater degree of anabolic resistance as you become more trained, for example. Or it could have to do with myonuclear domain theory, where you need to keep adding myonuclei to keep growing, or where the rate of growth of a given cell decreases as its size increases. All of these things could be contributing to why more trained lifters see slower growth than less trained lifters. However, there's another big component that not enough people really think about, and that is the real killer of gains, father time. As you become older, the conditions for growing more muscle become less and less favorable. There are quite a few studies demonstrating less muscle growth in middle-aged to older-aged adults compared to younger adults even when exposed to the exact same training program. For instance, one study found more growth in a group aged around 25 years old compared to two groups aged either 50 years old or 75 years old. There are many mechanisms behind why this happens. For example, some studies note that the first fibers to shrink as you age are type 2 muscle fibers which are larger and therefore account for a larger proportion of your muscle mass. And importantly, age can play into many of the factors I mentioned earlier when it comes to muscle protein synthesis or even myonuclear domain theory. As the authors note, the etiology behind the development of anabolic resistance is likely multifactorial, including epigenetic changes, decreases in satellite cell capillarization, reductions in circulating anabolic hormones, 
impairments of amino acid delivery, insulin resistance, and age-related physical inactivity, which may exacerbate these aforementioned factors. Importantly, some of this stuff can definitely be reversed and attenuated with the right training and diet. For example, we have evidence that older adults require more protein to maximize muscle building. So, if you're somewhat older, say above the age of 65 years old or so, you definitely want to consume a bit more protein. Similarly, one of the bigger reasons why older adults tend to lose muscle mass is because of inactivity. So if you just keep lifting into your older age, there's a chance you will still be able to gain some muscle mass, or at least mitigate any muscle loss. A decrease in certain hormones is also why aging is worse for muscle growth. Aging past around middle age is typically associated with a 1-3% to decrease in circulating testosterone levels. Essentially, as you age, the conditions for muscle building become less and less favorable. In other words, anabolic resistance starts building up. And you can view anabolic resistance, or essentially the degree to which your body resists muscle growth, as more of a dimmer switch than an on or off switch. Essentially, the conditions become incrementally less favorable for building muscle across your lifespan. However, just because they're not perfectly favorable, because you're 30 or 40 years old or 50 years old even, that doesn't mean you can't still grow muscle. Especially if other factors are in your favor, for example, you just started lifting weights and therefore your noob gains are ahead of you, you can definitely make gains even into your 50s, 60s and beyond. However, if other conditions aren't in your favor, you've been lifting for a while, your nutrition isn't great, etc., the degree of anabolic resistance that you're being exposed to does increase with age. And so, the authors postulate this. To increase your natural limit and to fight back against it the most effectively, you need to start lifting early in your life. Essentially, the more time you're able to spend lifting while conditions for muscle building are favorable, and therefore accumulate a large area under the curve of muscle growth, the higher your natural limit for muscle building will be. So all I'm saying is, if you have kids and they're two to three years old, better get them to start lifting. If not yesterday, at least today. Don't actually do this unless you want to. So while in the first category, you have things like reductions in muscle protein synthesis as you become more trained, and myonuclei or domain theory impacting your rate of growth, where if you can't add further myonuclei, you may not keep growing. In the second category, you have father time, essentially telling you, sorry man, you're not going to make any gains anymore. So there is a natural limit for everyone out there. It's not the same for everyone, but there is a natural limit. If only because aging takes its toll on everyone. And that's why the natural limit exists. It exists because both physiologically, as you become more trained, anabolic resistance builds up, but also because as you age, anabolic resistance builds up. And eventually, anabolic resistance is high enough that you can't keep gaining any more muscle. And your net protein balance will stagnate and eventually become negative. Wolf Coaching, provider of positive vibes. I hope you enjoyed the video. And now that you're acutely aware of your own mortality and gradual decline to old age, like the video, comment, subscribe. If you'd like to see me cover any other positive, feel-good topics, leave a comment down below and I'll get to them. If you'd like a training app that coaches you, no matter your age, no matter how advanced you are, no matter whether or not you've yet hit your natty limit and are pondering your own existence, check out myodapt.com. Myodapt is a coach in your pocket. We've integrated all of the latest science on lifting weights and how to maximize hypertrophy into Myodapt. And there will be a ton of updates coming. I'm confident saying that right now, there is nothing else like it out there. Out of any apps, I think it will provide the best training programming. Individualized to you, based on your age, how long you've been lifting, your preferences, whether there's any muscle groups you want to specialize on, and much, much more. The team behind Myodapt is highly educated with several PhDs in sports science working on it. So to get no notified by email when MyOdap finally gets released and to lock in at a lower price than anyone else, check out myodap.com and sign up to be notified. In the meantime, if you'd like me to coach you, check out the link above and we can make that happen. Mortality? Not so cool. But you know what is cool? This t-shirt right here. Rascal apparel. On a serious note, my favorite designs, my favorite training clothing in general. So if you like what you're seeing, go check it out and use code WOLF at checkout for 10% off. And now that I've killed your spirits, have a phenomenal day, and I'll see you next time. Peace.